let's take a look at some new data for the prevention of chronic migraines. Okay. All right, and uh, there's another trial. There's trial results and design implications from the Regain study and the Arenumab <laughs> study. One of these days I'm gonna get a drug I can pronounce. <laughs> Arenumab, chronic migraine study. Uh, what are the implications of the study of the decrease in migraine specific days? And does treatment vary based on migraines with or without aura? One of the biggest shocks to me is my patients getting the antibodies and telling me their auras got better. Why, would that, why is that shocking? It's all part of the syndrome, no? People believe that the aura may be due to a wave of electrical activity across the brain, which then could trigger the migraine headache. Since the mechanism of the antibodies is really in the headache part, I don't think I could come up with a good explanation as to why it should work for aura. So the drugs are designed for the headache of migraine, independent of whether or not you have aura. All right, well, what are the implications here of the decrease in migraine-specific days? Uh, other than we're gonna talk about what this means to patients' lives, but in terms of how you use the drugs, how you view these drugs. I think it's quite clear that these drugs are effective. They decrease the number of headache days, the number of migraine days, and the number of the days of people either nonspecific or specific migraine. So it hits all the major points we care about. So if a patient with that who has migraine has failed other things, it's really a life turning around event for many of these people. And the shocking part to me is I've had patients for 10 or 15 years that have failed every drug known to mankind and now they're back to normal. Well, for those patients, these drugs work great, right? right? Um, so that's your personal clinical experience. Correct. Share some more with me about these drugs. The first thing is I do not know who's gonna respond and who's not gonna respond. And I have people who have given up all hope, and they don't believe me, and they come back three months later and said, oh my God, I should have believed you. I've never felt this good in my life. I haven't had a headache since I've been on the drug. And we have other people who do not do well at all. So the fundamental issue is, there seems to be CGRP responsive and CGRP non-responsive migraine. Up front, we cannot tell the difference. And we don't know whether Botox and the antibodies are synergistic or not. Our game plan will be to analyze our patients, see how they did with the combination, and then stop. If they're doing great, stop the Botox, let it wear off, and see if they get better or worse. Okay, if you can't tell a priori who's gonna work, or on whom these drugs will work, and on whom these drugs will not, does it make sense to you to say, try these drugs, call us, let us know who's gonna stay on them, and let us know who we're gonna take off, as one way of getting data. You keep asking for data, there's some data for you. Well, we like published data as well. Um, but yes, we, um, <clears throat> one of the criteria that I already mentioned with reauthorization is, are these drugs effective? Uh, and the, the great hope is that they are reducing number of migraine days significantly. And usually that's not the only criteria we're asking um, to, to make sure that, um, <clears throat> you know, we'll continue the therapy. The other is the severity of the headaches, uh, looking for a decreased pharmacotherapy, back to the point that we had before. Hopefully um, the rescue agents are being reduced. And there's even a self-reported instrument that we'll accept. Uh, so we're looking for, is this the right patient? sequencing with uh, at least two prior options that should have been used before, but once they're on the CGRP, is the drug working? I think that's what we want to ensure. And how do you respond when he tells you that what you're asking for is not clinically relevant to the description of the patients he's giving you? Um, I, I guess we have a disagreement that needs to be um, going back to what are the criteria for which there should be a reasonable disagreement. Maybe there's an educational gap or a literature gap or scientific gap, uh, but I think that has to be reconciled. And if there is a disagreement, who should make the call? Should it be the MD or the payer? I'll ask each of you and I'll bet I get a different answer. <laughs> Well, that's I don't what, even have an arbiter here. Yeah, with an appeal process, you actually go to a different physician. If you appeal a second time, it actually you can ask for an expedited appeal with a specialty match reviewer. 
And what that allows for is for a dialogue to occur between the requesting physician and a, uh, a similar specialist, so a neurologist and dialogue that hopefully can get to the nuances of the case and uh, make a recommendation. And usually the health plan then accepts that recommendation. Does that satisfy you? If you are not in the ability to have access to accessory help, the time it takes for a physician to go through this process is overwhelming, and it's the reason that many physicians will not take care of headache patients. 